Hello YouTube, thanks for being with me today. It's Diego here. So today I'm gonna show you my entire process, all the raw footage of how with this reference image I achieved this result. So let's start. I start with a simple blocking focusing more on features instead of big things. Normally in a portrait where I want to get all the, all the face, I will focus on big things, but in this case I'm focusing more on features. I take my reference image just as a reference image. I don't try to copy it. In this kind of idea of the deconstructed portrait, what, I'm do, what I do always is I start building the structure on the skull and in the eye sockets. So the cavities in the skull are like really structural lines that can help you build the information around the eye. So that's the, the first thing I do. You know? And like the bridge you have between the, the eyes and leaves, builds, starts building the nose. So like I said, it's really fast, but I have already information that I like. And when you start a painting, when you start a blocking and you already have information that you like in the blocking, it's like a, re a good indication that you can go on in a good direction. So I start mixing colors. I work, I'm working with planes and geometry and the blocking uh, has already helped me a lot with that. I, I remember that the thing that I was focusing on this one is to have, I wanted to have richness in color. So as you can see, there is a lot of saturation and I'm searching for a lot of saturation. And it's not exactly like the reference image. I'm saturating a little bit more because I'm taking decisions for aesthetic purposes. So one thing that I do uh, when I'm doing portraits is that I separate in some families the, the colors. But, but it's not a rule that always guide me, but it's, it's a blueprint that I can use. Like the mid area of the face, the noses and the, the cheeks, always there is more redness in there. So in this case, I'm pushing a lot that. From the nose downwards, there are more grays and there are more cool colors. So I'm leaving that a little bit like unfinished because I already have uh, blue hues from my blocking. Another thing, like I've said in other videos, is that in this part, the painting is really staccato. So I'm not smoothing, I'm not connecting too, too much shapes by designing edges, but I'm trying to connect shapes now by hues and values and trying that the hues and values that I'm putting create a sense of unity. In this part, I'm pushing the, the saturation of, on this part of the, of the cheekbones. That's an area that you always want to focus be, because there is a lot of geometry and is, in a, is an important part of the skull that creates geometry. If you could see a skull, you could separate it between two parts and, and the, the cheekbones are the parts where, where the separation starts. So in the skull, the whole area of the forehead with the cheekbones are like the upper area of the skull. And, and then you have all the structure of the jaw. So those are the, if you want to separate it and break it. So that area of the cheekbones is super important. And in the skull, that area of the cheekbones ends with the cavities of, the, of where the eye sockets are. I remember that when I did this painting, I was really happy with the blocking. And so when I'm happy with the blocking, it's like I'm trying to focus on to not have so much information, but to try to have interesting information in just one area. Because for me, there was already something interesting in terms of composition and in terms of balance, aesthetic. So I remember, like I said, is just push more the features and I will have something interesting. So in this case, for example, I'm working more the, the lips and focusing on pushing hues. That means having more saturation, but also pushing contrast. Contrast gives you more depth and more sense of three-dimensionality. Always in my paintings, like I said, I want to be really honest with, with my process and I'm rough painter. So 
my first uh, attempts to get something can be visually interesting, but because they are rough. But if they are not visually interesting, they, they, they don't seem to work because they are not so aesthetic as I would like them to be. So when, in that case, I try to, to correct them by fixing a structure in, in, in one case and by pushing the drawing towards a more, a more realistic aspect. Or also another thing is I found solutions in terms of composition. That's what I'm doing right now, for example. I, I said like, I've, I think that in the bottom area of the composition, I could benefit for more, con for more contrast. So I this, this, this red, the, the same red that I have on the cheekbones, and I decided to put it next to the blue of the, of the shadows. What I found appealing about this theme of the deconstructed portrait is the unfinished aspect of it. It means that the, the person who is looking at an, at an artwork is finishing the visual idea with his mind or with his perception. So I don't know if, if it's something you can relate, but when we are seeing an artwork, sometimes you don't want to see something that that is already completely done, that has completely that that is completely interpreted. That's that's for example the the goal of hyperrealism that you want to really render each point or each freckle or each hair of a portrait. But for me, it has uh, although I respect the technique. It doesn't means it doesn't become appealing to me. It, it it doesn't say anything to me. So I think uh, with less information you can do or you can be more interesting. And the artists that I look up to and that have inspired me all the while, it's are do, work on the same idea. And even if you go to academic classic classical painters if you can if you could see the works of Rembrandt of Velázquez for example you will probably think that they are really rendering everything but if you could focus on the on their work you would see that it is always about pushing an area of the painting and pushing your view towards the the focal point the painter wants to push you. So it's always the painter pushing the, the viewer towards the focal point he wants. It's not that everything is rendered. And you, could, you can clearly see that when you have a rendered hand or rendered eyes and the rest is like really loose and more expressive. This can only work because of a great understanding of values that are already achieving a general impression of reality so that you don't have to render everything that you see. So for me that's more interesting and it's in the same idea of, of the idea I'm, I'm talking right now. Of course I have a more contemporary approach but the idea is the same. It comes from the same line of thinking of, and of learning of the academic way. I'm gonna take a moment now if you're enjoying my content, to please ask you to like and subscribe. You really help me to grow my channel and to keep uploading content for you guys. Also, you can go to my channel and watch my other videos. I'm uploading every week now and I'm trying to make content that is helpful to you and that can help you in your painting practice and in your learning curve. I have always think that when you're learning something, Sometimes you just need a different way to view things. Like we, we are bombarded with information and with techniques and with steps by steps. And I know that you can watch a video and it would make sense to you. And sometimes you just need a person that tells you things in the, in the way that you understand. And it doesn't mean that the way I'm you things can help everybody, but it means that probably it can help you. 
um, when I was learning in, in in Barcelona Academy of Art, that that school where I studied, we had a different teacher for every day. So when we were chatting with my friends at the end of of the day or at the end of the week, we always have a favorite teacher. Like everyone had a favorite teacher. Probably, of course, there is some teachers that stands out and that can relate more to everyone but we always have this individuality this experience that makes you makes you unique and in this in that same line of thinking you 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 can have some somebody that is going to tell you the things in a way that you understand so in this part of the of the painting for me i think the painting have already the big things there and i think i have a, i had a already accomplished the idea that i had about the the constructed portrait so now that i'm looking the time lapse what i think i'm doing is just defining defining like i said in other videos means a lot of things it can mean constructing more form and defining more tiny shapes finding hard edges but it can also mean push contrast and pushing richness in color. So what I do when I'm defining a lot of times is just pushing contrast. So I'm I'm taking my my color of my shadows that is I have two kind of shadows, the warms and the cools. So now for example, I'm taking a, a warm shadow that is a little bit like in the red area and putting it on the area of the eye and mo and uh, I'm also smoothing like you like you can see on the forehead I I pass like a, a more big and dry brush to smooth a little bit the area of the forehead to have a little bit more of a sense of a reading more clearly the image on the lips I'm defining more so I'm finding that depth the whole the, the hole of depth that there is between the, the two lips there is a hole in there so that hole means more darkness and like I've said in other videos lips you when you when you do lips you want to think about depth so you want to think that the corners of the mouth are more back than the upper area so is there in that part that you want to put more dark values I'm just purely defining, I'm playing in all the phase, I'm not just focusing on one thing, it's like I'm seeing everything and I'm, and I'm trying to ask myself what, what does this painting need to be, to be done. So uh, I added a little bit more light also in the eye. In this point I look at the reference and I'm, I'm searching for tiny things just to, to, to have that, uh, that awe moment where you, you can see your painting you're saying, and you're saying to yourself I think it's done. Now this this color slash hue slash value sorry is for building three dimensionality in the lips. You can see clearly that I'm searching for lights in the front area because it it would give more three dimensionality to the lips. And then I'm, I'm smoothing it a little bit more. So when I'm smoothing and I watch another part of the painting that needs smoothing, I just go ahead and go with that flow and continue to smooth another area. Like you will probably think that I'm not doing anything right now, but every every tiny brush do something. I put another color in my palette. Normally I have four colors in my palette, but now I added a violet cobalt and I'm using that lately on some paintings because it gives more richness to the shadow. So the shadows now have the warm of the red the and the cool of the um, turquoise the the tallow turquoise and then in the end i add this this tiny bit of cobalt that add more richness to the shadow so i i'm putting there like you see for example on the left side of the corner of the mouth i put it a little bit and i think it adds more richness and i added a little bit more also on the neck area where the painting starts to be more on the expressive side on the pictorial 
aspect. Tiny brushes for the eyes, of course. And yeah, I'm, I, I think I'm pretty close to be done now. So I know that this 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 image is a, is a little bit blurry, but I still wanted to share it with you because I think this part of the painting I'm doing this kind of expressive brush strokes that for me the main purpose is to balance composition, to balance and to make the composition more interesting. So this is the place where like I said a ton of times I'm just I'm just taking a step back and saying to myself what does this painting need? What can... As you can see now, I just put like a big brush. With a big brush, I, I put a big brush stroke on the corner of the mouth. So like I said, it's, it's a demonstration that the process is really open, that I don't have rules and that the rule really is that what the painting needs what what my intuition is asking me so that's a, the learning curve actually is to to listen to yourself i think is the most difficult part of painting because if you know so many things about painting you can stack you can get stuck in the things you know and you don't search for really an artistic thing the that's the that's the thing that i'm looking oh i'm i'm looking for for a no, for a sublime thing, for for captivating you, for captivating my audience with the painting. I'm not looking to impress you with skill. <laughs> anyway, if you're still here, I cannot thank you enough. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and share. I'm going to be uploading content for you every week and I'm going to leave some links to you for my other videos. Bye.